Okay, so in this video, we're going to download some data from uh, MIT OpenCourseWare and then take a section of code that they uh, made available here when looking at the statistical sommelier and introduction to linear regression. So this is in part basically just um, to figure out how do we load in uh, CSV files into a Google Colab um, uh, project and then uh, just run the uh, R code. We have some R code here uh, that um, we uh, took from uh, MIT OpenCourseWare and instead of running it in an R um, environment or R studio, I'm just uh, setting it up in the Google Colab. And then the benefit of that, of course, is uh, it's quite easy to share um, that or embed it into a web page. So uh, there is some um, benefit here uh, uh, having this available right in the Google Colab. Um, okay, so uh, the link to uh, CSV is here. And uh, maybe just to show that, so the first one. And um, we can go in, take a look. Okay, so it's there. And all we have to do is download those, right? Now I've already downloaded before, so that's why they're coming up as wine tree and wine test uh, two. Um, but I have in a folder, so to get into this project, and it'll, they will only be available these two files, CSV files, so that we can run our data over these um, uh, while this project is live. So to get our data in, let's go to content. Right, we might just come here to find content folder and just open and we'll just load in our um, data from here. Right, so upload and it's um, in this instance, it's on my desktop. Right in data wine and we load in one at a time right okay so it's only available while um this project is live as soon as we shut down we've got when we come back to open up again um then we've got to uh, link the data in otherwise you could set it up in your google drive and create a link to that, right? But that's a little bit more involved and this is a, s a slightly quicker way to probably uh, make available uh, data available into your Google Colab. Now we're going to use our code. So in a Google Colab, we must run this um, uh, line of code, first of all, um, and then uh, we'll install Tidyverse um, and uh, probably not necessary. I'm installing Tidyverse because um, later on I'll use glimpse right, as a command. Okay, so that's gone in. So we have the full suite of the plier and ggplot, but really we're not going to use. And then I want to read that CSV file in. So let's take a look and then glimpse. Okay, so we can see that it's read in and I'm taking a glimpse and it's seven columns, uh, the year. Now this is data and we're given the French population, 1952, uh, I think all the way up to the 1990s. Um, uh, we have the price of wine, but that's expressed as a natural logarithm. We've uh, winter rain, with the average growing season's temperature, harvest rain, then the age, how old the wine is, and then uh, the French population. So these are variables that could be interesting in predicting the price of wine. And this, um, if you go to um, the, this portal below here, you will find uh, a discussion around this it was a little bit controversial when the study was originally originally done with this data, um, but um, it's a, a discussion around what uh, drives the 
uh, price of wine and the quality of wine, right? So we're just taking it as a set of data. We're going to run, load in more data. And you can see we've now the, if this is just, again, seven columns, same columns as before, but this is the test data. And it's only two rows, so it's a tiny amount of really a small amount of data. You can see the rows here is also very small, 25 rows. And here we have two rows, right? And we can take a look at that uh, structure of this uh, integer number and um, so on. Uh, we can do a summary of the data set. So the um, looks like the data went from 1952 to 1978. The price of wine is in natural logarithms, I think expressed in dollars. So the natural uh, logarithm or it's the logarithm of the dollar amount and um, that linearizes uh, the data, the winter rainfall, the minimum and maximum, the average growing season's temperature, uh, the harvest rain, uh, age of the wine, five years, all the way up to 31 years, and then the population, 43 million, then in probably 1978, uh, up here at 54. Okay, so that's an overview of the, um, of the data and then we run a, um, a linear ordinary least squares estimation and um, it's um, just basically regressing the average growing season's temperature onto price. We probably expect that to be positive. So if we look at it, the coefficient is positive and then it has a T value of 4.2 and the p-value of less than 0 0.05, so it is statistically significant. So the average growing season temperature seems to have a positive effect, um, and it accounts uh, with an, an adjusted R-squared of 41, so that's quite high in the sense a single variable explaining this much variation in the price looks very promising. Um, we could take a look at the um, model residuals, some of the squares, errors, um, we can print that out uh, and we get 5.734875. Okay, so that's uh, uh, something that we can um, uh, delineate away from the uh, output. Um, we can run our estimation again, see do we get an improvement in our sum of the square errors and also look at the R squared. And when we run, have the second variable, you can see that uh, if there's a lot of rain at the harvest time, that is a negative effect. It has a T value in excess of two um, and a P value less than 0 0.05. So also statistically significant and our R squared has gone up to 68. So these two variables, the harvest rain, not that good. Uh, in explaining the quality and the price of the wine, um, but the average growing season's temperature. So um, when I say not that good, it is has a negative effect. Um, if you have a lot of rain at harvest time, uh, the effect is negative on the, the price of the wine. But if the average growing season temperature is uh, appears to be higher, we get a higher price for the wine. Uh, R squared up at 68. And again, if we do the sum of the squared errors, 2.97, it's come down. So we've more explanatory power here. Uh, we can run a third, third regression here and throw in everything. Um, and we have uh, R squared of 78%. Uh, statistical significance um, in well, in a few, okay, so the average growing season's temperature is statistically significant. Uh, it has a p-value less than 0 0.05. The harvest rain still negative and has a p-value less than 0 0.05, a t-value in excess of two, likewise here in excess of two. Winter rain has a marginal effect, um, very small, and it's not, it's close to being statistically significant, but really we could leave it out. 
age here also doesn't seem to be such a strong factor in explaining the value of the wine and then the population is, is not statistically significant. So we could leave out at least age and the French population could leave in maybe winter, um, rainfall, maybe not. Uh, we've reduced the sum of the squared errors. Um, and then we could refine a relationship again, run it, this is model four. Um, the average growth, okay, so we look at these variables. Now we have um, age has statistical significance uh, when we remove the French population. So uh, there may be um, some offsetting effects, age and population as the population has increased with time, the age of the wine may be increasing as well. So left, when we exclude population, then this becomes statistically significant. Uh, winter rainfall is statistically significant. A harvest rain is statistically significant. And the average growing season temperature is still statistically significant. Um, when we look at the R squared, it's 0 0.79. Uh, that's quite good. What's the correlation? then between um, winter rainfall and uh, the price. Is it positive? Is it negative? It's slightly positive. Maximum value here would be one. Minimum value would be negative one. So there is a positive relationship. If we have more winter rain, then the, the price of the wine ultimately will be worth more. Uh, population and age is a negative relationship, strongly negative. So uh, probably it's not wise to have both of these variables included in the same regression. Um, we can do a correlation matrix um, and um, you can see that um, when we look at um, the price of, uh, let's see, the price of wine, it's negatively uh, correlated with year, it's a one, price of wine and um, price is one, of course. Positive correlation with winter rainfall, positive um, uh, correlation with average growing seasons temperature, negative correlation with harvest rain. So harvest rain doesn't improve price, seems to be a negative relationship. Uh, with age, uh, it's, uh, we have a positive correlation and a negative correlation uh, with price for France population. But this and this uh, seem to be uh, diametrically opposed in terms of impacts. Um, okay, so we could do uh, regress, average growing season temperature, harvest rain, winter rain, and uh, we get statistically significant results bar winter rain. It's just quite, not quite there, 71% uh, uh, R squared. Um, we could have a look at our, the test uh, data. We could predict using model force. The model force seems to be one of the more promising models here. Um, model four has an R squared of 79. So that may be the one to go with um when we predict model four um using the test and then predict we have 6.76 uh as um for using the data in the first row and 6.68 data in the second row and we can look at uh compute an r squared 79 percent uh, and so our test uh, possibly uh, reveals a little bit of robustness here, but because the data is so small, uh, we probably wouldn't be so happy just to uh, depend on this such a small test. But still, it's giving us a reasonable uh, level of accuracy and um, um, perhaps uh, we uh, would be happy to uh, except model four has been a reasonable um, this, um, means by which to model the, uh, the, the, the price of wine.
Okay, so th that's available. A more thorough discussion is available here in the MIT uh, Somalia, um, uh, MIT Open Courses. Uh, just follow the link that will bring into uh, their data analytics. There's a section on linear regression, a section on logistic models um, and machine learning. It's very, it's an excellent uh, resource. Um, and I basically just uh, set it up in the Google Colab and demonstrated how to load up the CSV files, the Excel files here into the Google Colab and make available then uh, to run, to load in using this command, uh, wine, the name of the, the object we're going to create by reading the CSV file, wine CSV, uh, and then strings as factors as true. So uh, we include in the labels. Okay, so uh, I think I'll leave it there.